Hey, what's up, guys? It's Deathstalker Singing here, another guide to Destiny. This one, I'll be going over a couple discrepancies with the attack and impact stack specifically, as well as the armor and defense stats. Later on in the video, I'll also be going over armor, recovery, and agility, as also the special attributes of your guardians. First, let's talk about attack. Attack is this massive number you see whenever you hover over a weapon, or whenever you just check out the weapon in any way at all. There's this big ass number that says fucking 264. Seven or something around that nature or if you're lower level like 52 or something like that and immediately your first thought is hey this gun does 52 in damage or it's 52 in effectiveness or whatever you know you, you that big number represents a lot and most players judge that as the actual damage of the weapon but this is wrong it's actually the attack stat which is still sounds like hey this is the attack of the weapon but no the attack stat if you hover over it actually says something different what the attack stat actually is, is a rating of effectiveness for this individual weapon towards high level enemies. Now high level enemies does not mean enemies of higher level than you, just of high level enemies or just enemies overall. A uh, rumor that's going around or just a, a common belief is that the stat actually should be divided by 10 and this is the actual level that it's most effective against. So if you fully max out one of your legendary or exotic weapons and the attack is 300, Divide that by 10 and it's 30, making this weapon effective against any level 30 and below. This also applies to all the rare, uncommon, and common weapons also found in the game. If your attack is 242, then divide that by 10 and it's 24.2. I would say round down, I can't say for certain, but I would just round it down and say 24 is your best bet on the highest level enemy you should be using that weapon on. Not to say that you can't use this weapon on a higher level enemy, just that its effectiveness won't be as strong. Of course, this doesn't mean that you can't kill a high-level enemy. Everyone in Destiny knows, if as long as the enemy is within two levels of range, higher or lower, if you dump enough bullets in them, it will die. That's just proven fact. Now, if that's the case, when should you take attack into consideration? Of course, this should be always considered within PvE. This is because enemies will be, of course, higher level than you, and PvE is where the attack stat matters the most. Like I said, it judges here. A weapon's effectiveness towards high level enemies and you encounter many high level or similar level around your level enemies within the game. So this is where it matters the most. As for PvP, this won't matter much to none at all. I mean the attack stat would barely affect your gameplay in any way and by barely I mean this is only when the level advantage is enabled and this is only done during the Iron Banner event. So any other game types such as control, well there's game types but control Clash, Rumble, Skirmish, or even Salvage. As long as the level advantage is disabled, the attack stat will not matter at all to your gameplay whatsoever. This is when you actually consider the impact stat. The impact stat is actually found alongside the other stats of your weapons. These are the bars that you usually see when, lo when looking at the weapon screen. These include rate of fire, range, stability, and reload speed. Alongside those is the impact stat. Now impact is your actual damage per round for this individual weapon. By that I mean a high impact shotgun cannot be exactly compared to a high impact sniper rifle. When they're gauging impact it's usually within this weapon's actual type. Meaning shotguns to shotguns, sniper rifles to sniper rifles, fusion rifles to fusion rifles. Trying to compare a sniper rifle to a hand cannon or a sniper rifle to a Rocket launcher is just not going to work. These aren't the same type of weapons. Now while we're on the topic of actual high impact weapons, when it comes to actually doing damage to enemies in PvE, impact and attack of course should be taken into consideration. Now just because you have a high impact weapon does not mean it's going to be a lot of damage as I just said. But just because you have a high attack weapon doesn't mean it's going to do a lot of damage towards the enemy neither. In some rare cases you actually find that if the attack stat is small enough of a gap between two weapons, the higher impact weapon will actually win out, even if it has the lower amount of attack. So still you should take these both into consideration when choosing your weapon towards an enemy, but generally you should focus on the attack stat for the most part, if the gap is large enough of course. But remember, impact is the actual damage you're doing towards the enemy, whereas attack is the effectiveness of the damage done towards the enemy. So therefore a high impact weapon towards an enemy of too high of a level the effect of this and the damage of the impact will be actually reduced once it makes contact with the enemy. Another thing should be also considered range to enemy. Certain weapons have certain um, a limit to their range. 
as you can say, such as firing a machine gun at an enemy like I did with Sepius Prime. Firing at him was okay and it was doing a decent amount of damage, but then he warped and teleported backwards and got a little more distance from my machine gun. At that point, I actually lost a couple points of damage. So of course, range should also be taken into consideration because it can lead to a lot of damage being dropped off your weapon. Get taken a couple steps closer can be the difference between 10 points of damage sometimes. And of course, this is counter for each bullet individually, so spraying 30 rounds at a more extreme distance is of course going to reduce the damage you're doing to the individual enemy. Now I want to go over defense, because a lot of players look at this number and think as long as they keep raising this, they'll get stronger and stronger and therefore be able to tank. And this is not how it works at all. There are actually three stats located within your individual subclasses of your class. These three stats are Armor, Recovery, and Agility. Now I'm just going to be going over Armor right now because Armor is the closest thing to your defense actually, which is, or the, at least the image of what you think your defense is. Your defense, by the way, is nothing more than just like the attack, just a way of decreasing or the effectiveness of another weapon towards you. So increasing your defense, especially in PvE, will just reduce the amount of damage you do take, but not allowing you to tank exactly. It just increases your resistance, is what I'm trying to say. So higher defense increases your resistance to enemy attacks, especially in PvE. Or in PvP, when the level advantage is enabled. Like I said, this shouldn't be ignored though, because like I said, in PvE, it is very important to have high defense. This is the difference between enemy attacks towards you, so it's best to outfit your guardian with the highest defense armor you can. Now what I really really want to talk about here is actually the armor stats. The armor is one of, like I said, the attributes of your individual subclasses and it can be tweaked for each subclass differently. Such as with my hunter, my gunslinger has higher armor and thus is better in PV both PvP and PvE. Whereas my blade dancer is actually nearly fully specced into agility at the cost of course armor recovery. In order to get a full understanding of armor, you first need to know how the health system works. You may have noticed when you take damage, your health bar appears at the top of the screen. The health bar is actually divided into three different bars that are right next to each other. This of course looks like one individual bar, which you can argue it actually is. But it's actually broken up into three. The first two bars, as you're losing health, moving from right to left, is actually your shields, whereas the last bar, when the actual message comes up that you're at critical health and it's blinking, you hear the alarm sounds and everything, this is actually your health. So first two bars, shields, last bar, health. This is when you should take cover. If you're at this part, you should definitely take cover. Now what the armor stat does is increase your shield capacity. This means for those two bars there, you won't see the bar getting longer because of course that would just start to lean towards HUD clutter and we all know we would hate that. You may not know it, but you actually would hate that. But what the armor stat does is increase your shield capacity. This court, of course makes a major difference in combat, whether it be PvE or PvP, because unlike the defense stats, this actually matters in PvP even with the level advantage disabled. Your armor is your shield capacity, not your resistance to damage, so this is right here is what you will need to build up if you want to tank with your class. Another thing to note about this is that, is that the only class that can get the full potential at the maximum capacity of shields is the Titan class, of course. Whereas he can get an actual slight advantage over any other class who tries to spec fully into shields or, or armor as it's shown. Though I wouldn't recommend building a fully spec into armor subclass because this is usually at the cost of recovery and agility. Which I'll go over in just a couple of moments. But yes, reducing those can really put you at a disadvantage, especially agility. Some titans have found that going from a full armor build to a half armor and half agility build improves their effectiveness in combat by incredible levels actually. So remember, armor is your shield capacity, that's the easiest way to remember this, and defense is your resistance to damage. Now as I was saying, there are three actual attributes to your subclasses. The second one of course is recovery. Recovery is what some players feel is the least important of the three, but trust me on this one, recovery is still very important especially when it comes to PvP combat because it actually affects your shield recharge rate and your shield recharge delay. Therefore, increasing your recovery will actually reduce the delay between your shields when you're taking damage and when you're not. As you know, once you've taken too much damage, your shields need to recharge, so you go to cover and wait for your shields to start the recharge cycle. 
Now there's a small delay here, as I've just said, probably 10 times within the last 20 seconds. And this is the shield recharge delay. So by increasing your recovery stat, you'll actually reduce the time of this delay. And then eventually actually also reduce the time it takes for your shields to reach full capacity. So now you can see why this stat is actually very necessary for your guardian. Of course, this isn't just for PvP, but also PvE. Your recovery stat can be the difference between dying behind cover and living to fight another day. Now, just like the armor class, only one guardian can make full effectiveness of this stat. And that, of course, is the Warlock. The Warlock can have the highest recovery in the game. Like, completely. That's just it. Just like the Titan can have the highest amount of shields, the Warlock can have the highest recovery rate. This isn't to say that having high or full recovery on any other class isn't effective, it's just to say that Warlocks can get a little bit more juice out of it, just as Titans can get a little more juice out of their shields. And last but not least, we have Agility, which I find one of the strongest needed attributes of your subclasses. Now, of course, I'm a bit biased because I play as a Hunter and mostly Blade Dancer, so I use a speed build almost the entire time. Now just like I said with the recovery stat and the warlocks as well as the armor stat and the titans, you've probably already figured this out on your head, but the agility stat goes to hunters. The hunters can pull the most agility out of the agility stat and actually have a little bit of an advantage over the titan and the warlock. This is even more evident with the blade dancer class, which can turn them into a mad dashing psychopath. Now, what is agility exactly though? In short, agility just affects two things, your movement speed and your jumping. Just that. But once you dig a little deeper, you'll see that it actually affects a lot more about those two things. For instance, for your jumping, the agility stat actually affects the overall effectiveness of your jumps. So for the hunter, the blink, double jump, and triple jump is also affected by the agility stat. This will increase the height of it, as well as the maneuverability of it. This is also true for the glide of the Warlocks as well as the Titans jump. More agility for no matter what class it is will give you a higher jump or a higher vertical acceleration and maneuverability while in air. As you may remember I said it affects two things, jumping and the other thing was movement speed. Movement speed is actually the more complex of the two actually. Movement speed is actually many things when it comes to the game such as walking, sprinting, moving backwards, such as backward steps, sidestepping and strafing, or walking when you're crouched, or even carrying weapons depending on their weight. So by improving your agility stat, you're actually improving the speed while doing all of these things. Which, like I said, will make you a hell of a lot more effective in combat, or decrease the time it actually takes to reach objectives. Agility also affects one other part of movement speed, which is the sliding. Agility will actually affect your slide and speed and distance actually. So fully spec into agility would turn into a baseball slide and psychopathic madman. And of course if I'm going to say psychopathic madman, I'm talking about the blade dancer again because the blade dancer is just amazing. But yes, agility affects of course your slide and speed and distance. So if you're one of those slide and slide and shotgunners, then agility is exactly where you want to be at. So now let's recap. Attack is your effectiveness towards high level enemies. You can usually divide this number into 10 and it gives you a level or an idea of a level that this weapon is basically more ideal for tackling. And then there's defense, which actually can, which is actually your resistance stat to enemy damage. This should be consideration for PvE really or PvP when the level advantage is actually enabled, like in the Iron Banner. Then there's armor, which is actually your shield capacity of your guardian. Remember your health is divided into three bars and and shields take up the first two bars when you're taking damage. Remember Titans will also get the highest amount of shields out of this because they can actually reach their highest level of armor stats. Then there's recovery which as it increases affects your shield charge delay and charge rate. Of course Warlocks can get the best out of this because they can actually increase this stat to the maximum level. Therefore Warlocks can have the highest rated shield recharge rate as well as the shortest shield recharge delay. And last but not least is the agility stat, which actually affects your movement speed overall with everything, including jumping, sliding, carrying heavy weapons, strafing, backstepping, whatever it is, it affects the movement speed as well as your jump height and maneuverability while in the air. Now, of course, specking into any one of these completely, as in putting all your points and all your apples in that one basket of a stat, 
is pitcher guarding at a disadvantage in other stats, so you must find your specific blend for each subclass. They don't have to be exactly the same, such as my Hunter's Blade Dancer is more of a speed build, whereas my Gunslinger has a bit more damage, even though it does still have a little bit of a speed bump. So depending on your class, and then of course your subclass, you should take consideration of where you're going to put these stats at, and generally try to blend it to make you the most effective Warlock, Hunter, or Titan in PvP or PvE. So now hopefully you have a better idea of what these individual stats do as well as what they can do when combined together. Of course, I hope you don't have so much of this understanding that you become a better player than me because that would be unacceptable. So until next time, I'll catch you guys later. So hey guys, I hope you enjoyed this video, but more importantly I hope that you learned a shit ton of stuff from it because that's what it was made for, that was its purpose. Now if you did either one of those things or even both those things, go ahead and like this video because I really do love those thumbs up. Or you can comment below in the section below, down there, somewhere, just drop a comment, question, or anything. Or you can subscribe to my channel because I always have more guides to Destiny as well as other games that will be coming up and maybe even some previous games that I've played. Now if you don't believe me, you actually click on one of these houses located in this video right here to take you to a guide on two of my favorite exotic weapons, the Pocket Infinity and the Effective Shotgun. Clicking on either one of these tiles will take you straight to the video. Remember, you can always find me on Twitter as well. All links are in the description.